And hi once again, Sand Shark fans. I'm Jody Vermilia with another edition of Softball Media Day. And we're here today with the head coach of USCB Softball, Bailey Wigness. Hi, Bailey. Hi, Jody. How are you today? Great. You know, 2020's here. We're, uh, girls come back today, so we're ready to get rolling. And you're going to get rolling quickly. Just yes. in a short time, it is what everybody looks mm -hmm. forward to, opening day. When is that? Who do we play? And what times? And all that. Yeah, so we'll play Montreat on February 2nd um, at 12-2. and 2. So everybody should be able to go back and watch the Super Bowl. It's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, hopefully the Vikings are in it. Um, but, no, so we'll play Montreat at 12-2. And, um, and you know, it's just an exciting day. You know, we're ready to go. They're a very, very scrappy team. Um, but we're, we're going to be preparing for them. And February 2nd, that's the day. Do coaches and players get as excited about opening day as broadcasters do? Because I'm looking, really looking forward to, to getting the season going. Yeah, so typically December, the girls are off. We're out of school. January, we're doing a lot of inner squads. And I think people get tired of playing themselves. Like all you're doing is, yeah. is facing your own pitchers, and they're at that point they're ready to, to get after somebody else. So um, it's a very big deal for us, um, very much anticipated in terms of you know, we haven't played anybody else since when our last fall scrimmage was in October. So it's been a few months, and they're ready to go. How was fall season? You played a few games away mm -hmm. and at home. How did that go? What were your impressions? Um, it was good. You know, we have nine new people. So we have seven freshmen and two transfers. And so getting an opportunity to see them and, and what they bring to the table was, was really good. So we played um, two junior colleges at home, and then we went on the road and Played College of Charleston. That was a, a fun game for us. And then we were supposed to play uh, CFC. Okay. No, not, not CFC. CSU okay. and uh, Georgia Southern. And those got rained out, unfortunately. Okay. So it was a great fall season. The end of it, the last couple weeks, it seemed all we got was rain. So it was. It felt like it got cut short. But it was exciting. I mean, they're, they're a young team. And um, just kind of seeing what they bring to the table was just exciting. And uh, we'll see what they bring in the spring. We sure look forward to seeing the uh, Team 9 mm -hmm. take the field. Team yeah. 8, of course, the reigning Sun Conference champions. Yep. How did that feel for you as a first-year head coach to lead a team to a conference title right out of the gate, right off the bat, if you'll pardon the pun? It was it was exciting. I mean, obviously, I've, I've had success as, a, as an assistant, and, you know, the big question was, can, can she lead as a head coach? Um, can she be in charge of a program? So... For me, the goals that I set last year is I wanted to set the culture and win a conference championship, and we did those things. So to kind of see that come to fruition after all the work that we put in, was it was a special moment. Um, I know for, for Team 8, since nobody on that team had won a conference championship before, and, and then for me, I mean, just to, to kind of experience that with them, and it was kind of like a first time for everybody. So it was... Um, it was exciting. It was special, for sure. How important, Bailey, is team chemistry? We talk a lot about that on the, you know, the, the, the pro side of mm -hmm. things in Major League yeah. Baseball and, 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 you know, collegiate NCAA mm -hmm. softball. Is team chemistry really a thing? Does it help when all the players gel and they get along and you kind of unite behind a, a goal? Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have team chemistry, you're going to hit a bump in the road and you're not going to know how to recover. So just being able to rely on your teammates in terms of how do we recover from mistakes? How do we get past a tough loss? How do we get past a tough inning? How do we come back when you're down 9-2 to two or 3-1 or to one in the bottom of the seventh um, in a conference championship game? So how do you overcome those things? And it's team chemistry. It's your culture. It's are you a family? Do you love mm -hmm. each other? Can you rely on each other? So it's, it's huge for us, and it's something that we place a huge emphasis on is, is our culture, our chemistry, and um, how we treat each other. And um, that's how we just go about things in our program. Let's go back in time. This is 2020 now. Mm -hmm. Nine oh years gosh. ago, you won a national championship with Arizona State mm -hmm. University. So now you're a head coach. You've been an assistant coach, and you were a championship player. Mm -hmm. How has your philosophy changed? Has it been shaped by those successes? Has it been tempered by those mm -hmm. successes? I guess, how do you apply those successes to your philosophy now as a head coach? I mean, I talk about this with, with a few people, but almost winning as a freshman, it's kind of a little bit of a curse. So that happened your it's, freshman year? Yes, it's my freshman wow. year, so right out of the gate. And so it's almost a blessing and a curse because you've, you've been at the top of the mountain. You've tasted what it means to be the best in your sport and one team in the country wins the last game and so every year after that as a player and as a coach you're chasing that and it's just it is so incredibly difficult to get there 
but it is so worth it. So that's that's always on the back of my mind is how can I get to the top of the mountain again? And it's almost like you get close and then you slide, you have to slide all the way back down and you're kind of a new playing field every year. But it's been tough. But I mean, I think for me, it makes you realize what you can do. I mean, I'm from a very small town. Nobody thought I could go and play and um, have that success that I did. So it was special for me to accomplish that. Um, and it's something that has influenced me as a coach because I know what it takes to get there. And so how can I recreate that in our culture? How can I recreate that in our preparation? And how can we put that product on the field? And so for me, um, just being great in everything that we do, whether it's, you know, in the classroom, how do you talk to mm -hmm. people? How do you talk to your parents? Um, how do you prepare? How do you practice? So I think that's really shaped me because I, I've seen what it takes to get there. Um, just so trying to replicate that in my own way and and get my teams to experience what I got to experience because it is something that no one will ever be able to take away from me and it's something that I'm going to cherish obviously for the rest of my life. When did you discover in your own life that softball was it? This is what I want to do. This is what I excel at. Did that happen early? Did that happen you know, in middle school or high school? Um, I mean, I was always a multi-sport athlete, so okay. I started playing... Well, if you want to know the truth, I thought I was going to be a professional soccer player until I was eight. And then I started playing um, travel softball. And then uh, my parents were kind of like, okay, you can't really play soccer because all the weekends are filled with, with softball now. So um, so I started playing softball. My older sister played, so I got to watch her. And um, she really influenced me in terms of people always talked about that I was a student of the game and that I was just so savvy in terms of like instincts and stuff like that. Well, I got to watch my sister for however many years and she was very good. Um, so I, I played softball growing up, obviously. And then I, I was very into volleyball my, my junior, sophomore and junior year, um, all throughout high school. But I really contemplated, hey, maybe I can go play volleyball at the next level. Um, and then my junior year, I went to a camp at Arizona State and Coach Myers said, hey, we want you. And so it's kind of hard to turn down Coach Myers, Absolutely. one of the greatest uh, to ever coach the game. And he's from my hometown. Um, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, the connection was there already. So it's kind of kind of hard to turn that down. But, you know, that there was a thought of, hey, maybe I can go play volleyball. Um, so, but yeah. That's how what I, was your position in softball? What, what um, was your... I started as a middle infielder. Okay. And then I played um, a little bit at ASU. My sophomore year, I played Second base, I played a couple games at third. I DP'd, played a couple games in the outfield, and then I ended up um, in right field my junior and senior year. So kind of a, a jack of all trades. So aside from your national championship, which mm -hmm. I'm sure waits up there as your, as your most precious softball memory, mm -hmm. give us another one. What stands out as a moment in your softball career, even Playing when you're young? Or coaching career? Any, anything that stands out as a moment that you said, wow, this is really, softball is really what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a tough one. Um, I think obviously as a player, the national championship is, is huge. I think as a coach though, it was actually winning, um, the conference championship at Boise state, our mountain West title, just going through, you know, my first year there, we were, I think we were 14 and 38 was our record. Mm -hmm. And then came back the next year and I think we won 30 something games and we had the number one turnaround in the nation from from one year to the next in terms of wins and that next year it was like okay what's next for this team like we've already accomplished so much what's next and to see the seniors and the juniors who had gone through those terrible seasons um, to get to the top of their mountain was was really special for me so that was like not only was it special for me but it was hey like these moments here is, is why why we coach why I coach. Sounds like all the success you've had as a player and as an assistant coach and now as a head coach. Does that add, do you take pressure on yourself? Do you take that as I have to keep winning or do you take it as I'm, I've obviously accomplished some things in this sport. I can mentor these young ladies. Mm -hmm. Let's just go out and do it again. Yeah. Is that um, I don't know. I think for me, no matter what team it is, I want to be the best. You know, I want to be, I want to be the greatest coach that I can be and I want to be the greatest coach ever mm -hmm. um and so for different teams that means different things and i think when we talk about great teams great teams reach potential and i think for that boise state team my second year when we won 30 games that was our potential so we were a great team then um last year we were a great team we reached our potential um so i think for me just helping kids reach their fullest potential and, and the team um that's kind of what i what i 
determine what success is for us, but I think the mentoring piece is, is huge, and I've seen such a growth from last fall to this, you know, coming into the spring from some of these girls that um, has just been amazing to me, and it's worth more to me than any championship or any ring to see a kid get into nursing school or to sure. see um, a kid get into grad school of their choice and to see a kid who, you know, I asked her a question last year in our first meeting and I, she put her, he her hands in her head and like she couldn't, she couldn't answer it. She was just so nervous and now she's coming in and she's speaking with conviction and so doing those things are really, really important to me. Um, so just the, the mentoring piece is great and you know obviously the, the, win, the wins are great but I think the more you develop the people, the better product you're going to put on the field. And how neat is it that you have coaches on your staff for 2020 that were players in 2019, and we interviewed earlier mm -hmm. uh, Allie Simmons, who's, mm -hmm. a, who, who's a former player herself, mm -hmm. and Kayla Boyle, who played on Team 8 last year. She was a starting uh, center fielder. Mm -hmm. How is that for you to have coached them, seen them succeed, seen Kayla set records as her head coach, yep. and now she's coaching alongside you? That's got to be kind of a neat feeling. It, it is, and so she was really a special player last year. She was, in terms of her leadership, she – was just a rock for me. I mean, that that senior class was great, but but just a couple, like Caleb Boyle, she sticks out to me. She was just a rock. I mean, you knew that when she's kind of said, hey, you know, I want to get into coaching, it was a no-brainer, like, hey, come back, be a volunteer, and she's continuing to do that. So to see her develop as a player and now to help her develop as a coach is, is so special to me, and she has done an incredible job. Um, Allie did an incredible job last year. I know she had she was on maternity leave uh, all all semester this this year, so we're ha happy to have her back. But Molina Martinez is also mm -hmm. here. You know, played shortstop. Huh. Uh, did she ever? Yes, yeah, <laughs> and she has just been incredible in terms of helping develop our our infield. And they are very young. We are very young on the infield this year. So having her there has been helpful. Canyon Crosby, um, she she helped us out last semester. Obviously, a DP pitcher last year. So just having all those people, it's just. It's another person that the girls currently on the team can relate to. So maybe they don't feel comfortable coming to me about mm -hmm. something, but, mm -hmm. hey, Kayla, can you help me out with this? Sure. Hey, Melina, I need help with this. And so just having all those pieces in place, I mean, I, we have a, a great staff, and um, I feel like as a head coach, you're only as good as, as what your assistants can, can do. So we're in good hands right now. I have to ask you about Kayla Boyle for a minute. When I interviewed Allie and Kayla earlier, we talked about the infamous record-setting double. <coughs> and mm -hmm. how she apparently ignored your signal to go to third and mm -hmm. stopped at second. Is that, did that, how, is that how it went down from your perspective? Listen, I think her dad, LB, I think he was standing <laughs> right behind me and he was holding her up and she picked him up instead of me. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, it was, a, it was a tough ball. The, the left fielder was fumbling the ball out there. So I was waving her and I was very adamant. I don't know if you, you've seen me coach. Mm -hmm. When I'm waving somebody, oh, yeah. I'm waving her. I said, you're yep. not real subtle yeah. with your signs. Yeah. So I was definitely not giving her the stop sign. I was waving, um, but she stopped and uh, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't really hinder the outcome of the game. So it's, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. It's something we joke about still. Well, let's talk a little bit more about 2020 mm -hmm. season starts in just a few weeks. Yeah. What goals do you have? And, you know, we don't want to divulge everything mm -hmm. here, but what what are you looking to see out of your girls that opening day against Montreat there at home? Mm -hmm. What do you want to see your team go out and accomplish on the field and carry with them to get set the pace and carry into the rest of the 2020 season? Yeah, what, what I want to see is I want to see us play USCB softball from the first pitch of 2020 to the last pitch of 2020, whatever, wherever, whenever that may be. Um, but just to, to bring the preparation that we've done from September up until it'll be February 1st, our last day of practice before we play. I want to see us play USCB softball and, and do the things that we've been doing all year long. Um, and so I think if we can do that, you know, we're going to be we're going to be a tough team. We were a tough team last year. I think we can be tougher this year. Well, we really look forward to seeing what happens in 2020. 2019 was mm -hmm. a fun ride. You were undefeated was, for the yep. first 20 games. Yeah. That had to be a little bit of pressure, too. How did that affect your philosophy from the 21st game on? You were 20-0. and 0. Nobody would have expected mm -hmm. that or could have predicted that happen. How did that impact the team, do you think, moving forward? Kayla and Allie said they didn't really see it, mm -hmm. and Kayla as a player didn't really see it as more pressure. Mm-hmm that they really didn't even think about it. Yeah. 
did you think about it as a head coach? Yes, how I thought about it. About uh, it? How, yes, how do you not think about it? I, I didn't, we didn't never talked about it with the team. Um, and it's not something I focused on, like, oh, we're not going to get the 20th win or the 21st win. But it's something that's in the back of your mind. And I think for me, I remember we were playing Reinhardt, and we were down – one to one to zero or two to one and, and that was our first comeback mm -hmm. win and that would have been our first loss so it's the top of the seventh and I'm thinking like okay I got to prepare myself like if we lose what do I say to the girls and then we came back and we won so I was like okay not this time um but it's not something that we we focused on so they were absolutely right we try to just stay one pitch at a time the next game is the most important game we're going to play all season so we didn't really talk about it. And then, of course, when it came to an end, it was it was tough. You know, it's when it's, you haven't experienced losing in mm -hmm. months, sure. a month and a oh, half, yeah. whatever it was, it's tough. It can kind of knock you on your butt a little bit. Um, but just learn how to recover and, and keep going on. But, no, we, we tried not to talk about it. Um, and it just, you know, it just ended up we played well for the first, you know, few weeks of the season. So It was a magical season. Again, mm -hmm. you know, the reigning Sun Conference mm -hmm. champs. We yep. look forward to 2020 and mm -hmm. what, Team 9? can do on the field. Yeah. Of course, you can go to uscbathletics.com for all information related to uh, softball, baseball, any other sport here at USCB. And we want to thank Coach Wigness for her time this morning, and we want to encourage you to come out opening weekend, January 31st, the first home baseball game. February 1st, we'll wrap up the uh, baseball's opening uh, series for the weekend, and then softball starts on Super Bowl Sunday, February 2nd. We look forward to that. Thanks for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you here on the Sandshark Game Day Network all season. I'm Jody Vermilia from USCB. Thanks for watching and fins up.